uh, before the last session, we did that chalk talk, and we went over a we went over the Starling curve, the force tension curve, the pressure volume loops, and then how a pure change in preload affected the, those curves. And then we ended with this question, which you all did reasonably well on, but there was there was some uh, some differences of opinion. And so this is really the corollary. If you look at the graph on the right here, the force tension curve going from A to B, you are simply moving along the, the current force tension relationship, which means this is a pure change in afterload, an increase in afterload, decreasing the stroke volume. The left-hand graph, the, the Starling curve, is showing that that same change in stroke volume is represented by moving off of the current force uh, Starling relationship and onto a lower Starling curve. And so when you see these th two things in combination, this is reflecting a pure change in afterload. And of those drug choices, option four, phenylephrine, is a pure vasoconstrictor, increasing afterload, and therefore decreasing stroke volume. So that's, that's the correct volume, uh, uh, answer to that one. So let's go, though, back to, to my whiteboard here. So we've talked about a pure change in preload, and we just demonstrated a pure change in afterload. So the other thing that we can demonstrate is kind of this basic primer on these uh, ventricular physiology is changes in contractility. So again, we'll go back and draw our original relationships, the Starling preload to stroke volume relationship, the force tension or afterload to stroke volume relationship, and the pressure volume relationship. So if we were to change contractility on these, and we'll give them all a starting point uh, where we're at. So if we increase contractility, isolated increase in left ventricular contractility, we know that stroke volume is going to increase. So if we look here at the Starling graph, we know that we're going to go higher, but we're not changing preload. Preload is constant, so that means we're going to just move simply up here. We're going to go from A to B with a pure increase in contractility. You don't move left or right because there's no change in preload. Similarly, over here on the force tension curve, there's no change in afterload with this pure isolated change in contractility. So you will go from A to B here as well. So if you just use these two figures alone, if you see that neither preload is changing on the left or afterload is not changing on the right, but yet stroke volume is increasing, then you know that there's an increase in contractility. Now, the important thing is how we, how we might represent that on this pressure volume curve. And, and this line here is called Emax, and it's kind of the contractile state. This, again, this point up here is kind of, kind of what we say afterload is. But if you increase contractility, the slope of this increases. And so that would result in a, let me pick a different color here to show this. Um, We'll go to red. So then, even though preload is staying the same and afterload is staying the same, you can, you can eject to this smaller end diastolic or end systolic volume. So you're going to increase your stroke volume because you've increased the contractile state here. So these three things together represent an increase in stroke volume with constant preload, an increase in stroke volume with constant afterload. And here, afterload and preload are the same, but we've increased the elastance or Emax line, demonstrating a pure increase in contractility. So what we'll do on subsequent sessions is come back and we'll ask you some of those same things. We'll give you one, two, or all three of these graphs with a change from point A to point B, either, and then give you choices of drug therapy or interventions that may have been undertaken on these patients and, and help you figure out how to, how to understand the ventricular physiology that resulted in those changes. So I, I hope that with this two-session primer on 
startling force tension pressure volume loops and how we reflect preload, afterload, and contractility changes on these uh, curves uh, helps you understand the effects of drugs on cardiac performance.